where it's attached to the cecum. A lance incision crosses McBurney's point in the skin crease. A gridiron incision, which is in line with the fibres of external oblique, crosses McBurney's point perpendicular to the spinoumbilical line and may be useful if the incision needs to be extended towards the right upper quadrant. The lance incision can be sighted more inferiorly as a bikini line incision in young women who are conscious of cosmetic appearance. A lower midline incision may be preferred in cases of diagnostic uncertainty. In this open appendicectomy model, a lance incision is performed. The skin is incised with the belly of the knife. Next, divide subcutaneous fat, scarpus fascia and underlying tissue to expose the external oblique aponeurosis. This represents the external oblique aponeurosis, which should be divided in the line of its fibres. Self-retaining retractors should be repositioned to give a better view. Blood vessels crossing the operative field should be ligated with a suitable material such as 3A Vicor. Spreading dissecting scissors along the line of the blood vessel is less likely to damage it. fibres of internal oblique. Again, reposition the self-retaining retractors so you have optimum view. Internal oblique should be split rather than divided by opening Mayo's straight scissors in the line of its fibres. We have purposefully scored this model to demonstrate the technique, although in the models with which you are presented, Split can be widened using Langenbach retractors to display the muscle underneath. Transversus abdominis should also be split in the line of its fibres. Beneath this muscle, the fused transversus fascia and peritoneum will be visible. Apply two mosquito forceps to a fold of peritoneum and ensure that only peritoneum is held by pinching the peritoneum between your fingers. Mm -hmm. 
make a small incision in the peritoneum using either dissecting scissors or a knife and enlarge the hole in the line of the skin incision. If there is free fluid or pus, take a swab or alternatively collect a sample of fluid using a syringe. Look for any bile stained fluid which may indicate a perforated peptic ulcer. Identify the cecum via tinei coli and follow these to the base of the appendix. It may be possible to deliver the appendix using a finger sweep. In some circumstances, the cecum may need to be mobilised in order to deliver the appendix, but that is not the case in these models. A Babcock forceps can be used to enclose an uninflamed portion of the appendix. In this manner, the appendix can be delivered. View the mesoappendix against the light to identify the appendicular artery, which enters from the medial aspect. Create a window in the mesoappendix, avoiding the vessels, and ligate the vessels between clips using two ovicral sutures. Divide the vessels and then divide the mesoappendix. Crush the appendix base with a hemostat and replace it distal to the crush segment. Doubly ligate the crushed segment with 2 ovicle. Divide the appendix just proximal to the hemostat and place these instruments in a dish for contaminated articles. Insert a seromuscular purse string suture of 2O PDS or similar material on a round bodied needle encircling the appendix base.
ask your assistant to push the appendix base using non-tooth forceps whilst you tighten the purse string to bury the stump. The peritoneum is closed using a continuous suture of 2 PVS. It may help to place a flip suit on the free edges of the peritoneum. Loose, interrupted, tuivical stitches should be used to oppose the muscles of the transversus abdominis and internal oblique. External oblique is closed using a continuous stitch of tuivical. Scarpa's fascia can be closed using interrupted sutures.
subcuticular suture of 3M monocryl can be used to close the skin incision.